I'm Dan Anderson, MA80, Harness and Screamer System. We're going to go over the anatomy of trapping hands. Now, trapping hands comes off the stick action. Now you remember that the person strikes this way and we have different types of uh, checking, which is first one is what I call parallel check, side by side with the stick here. Then we have a cross check where the hand will actually come in front of the stick in this fashion. When you're looking at tracking hands, the first thing you do is bang, practice here, block, check, and you've got your counter upstairs. Now you've also got the same thing if you go block and you do a cross check in here and you either strike in this fashion or whatever. So, first thing I want you to do is, you're just here, block, bring it back this way, pop, or the same thing, block, bring it underside, pop, and get familiar with the parallel check, cross check, and then we'll move on from there. All right, for this next drill, I'm going to lay down my stick, and I'm going to have Tom do the number one strike, and my stick hand, which is now obviously empty, I'm going to go ahead and check on his hand, I'm going to use the other hand to check the stick. Again, parallel check of the very first action we did in the other sequence, and check here, check here, withdraw, and strike upstairs. Now, I can do the same thing where I go here, I actually tag his stick. Now this is a training thing, He's not, I'm not gonna do this full speed, I'm gonna do this full power on his stick, but it's a training thing here where I touch here, I go over the top of my own arm as I withdraw this down, and bang, strike here, or I can do the same thing where I touch here, I trap over the top and I thread through my arm this way to strike upstairs. So we've got parallel check, strike upstairs, we have cross check, strike downstairs, and then you can add one aspect here, which is he strikes to the body and I can tag this down, go over the top and bang here. So, parallel check, Cross check, cross check. You can do one other thing if you wish, and that is you can come underneath your arm and strike as well. So drill that for a moment, then we'll continue on. Okay, good. Now for the third segment. This segment, Tom puts down a stick and throws the punch. You have to parry. Now, from here, you can slide this down. You've got the trap, and you've got the counter strike. Now, when I originally did this with the stick, you have, you've got the strike, you've got the block, you've got the parallel check, which means that you can block, you can parallel check this, this, this way rather than sliding through. Bang, bang, you pop here. Or you had the cross check, which would be the block, and then the check here, bang, or bang here. So, what I want you to do is you go like this. He just extends his arm, and you practice parallel check, bang. You practice cross check, bang. Parallel check, hit, cross check, and your counter strike can be the body, counter strike can be upstairs, but you're going back and forth between parallel, cross, parallel, cross. One of the things that you'll find out about the cross check is that you'll actually have to get your own arm out of the way in order to make the cross check effective. This way. So, parallel, bang, cross check, bang, and then we'll get into the two person drill. Good, you got that? All right. Now, let's go into dual person uh, drill mode. And this is what's called decadena or the chain. He throws the punch, I've got my trapping hands, one, two, and here, and on my third shot, watch his other hand, one, two, three, he's got this, one, two, three, and you go back and forth. Now, notice, at this point, I am not trapping, blocking, locking onto his arm, going for the strike here, 
because what that does is that stops this flow, we get into a tug of war, and so forth. This is a drill. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, notice I can go parallel check when I do this. Or I can do cross check. And when you do a parallel check, your other hand is going to come back and ride this way. So you've got this happening at the same time. So instead of one, two, three, it'll end up being more of a one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, or you've got your one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and so forth. So do that back and forth. One key point here is that when you're doing this, there's going to be one person who's on the inside of the arm, one person on the outside of the arm. So on the inside of the arm, your check in is actually going to have to come up and intercept on the inside as it is traveling. Otherwise, what's going to happen is he's going to go totally straight. You'll be waiting, bang, bang, bang. And the timing will be off. What you need to do is you need to, as you're doing this, watch, now watch my right hand is, you notice as he's punching, it is coming up from underneath and the inside, so I can ride his arm and then take it off to the side and parry. That's just one of the tricks on, if you're the person that's on the inside. So, drill that, get a feel for that, and then we'll go into some actual practical applications of this particular action. Okay, good. How have you done with that particular drill? I'm sure you did fine. Now, one interesting point. This drill, what I just taught you, will not work in an actual encounter. Why? Because you're standing here and look at the distance. See, we go here, bang, 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 bang. Not close enough to hit. One of the things about the trapping hands is that it works against a committed strike. It does not work against a strategic setup strike, such as if I'm here, I'm throwing a jab, and bop, bop here. The retraction is going to be when the person actually tries to grab, such as he throws, he throws the jab. Very, very hard if the person pop, pop, the person pop here. When the person wings the punch long, and there's this commitment to actually do damage, what happens is that he's striking, he's following through, which means if I deflect the punch, it's still going past. I can nail it up as it goes past. That's the key thing. So, this next aspect of the drill, this is what I want you to do. On your parry, instead of here, and drop it down, right. Whether you're riding on the inside or you're riding on the back of the arm this way, get the idea of you're here and you actually ride the punch. Now I want the other person, what I want them to do is, I want them to go ahead and do a palm and you go over the forehead. So what happens is you've got this action Right. Now you notice he's bending my head back. Good. That's exactly what I want. So when he, when he strikes, now you notice the commitment. Bang. I just moved his arm. I've got this right here. And then I can trap and bang like this. But that comes in a moment. So right at the moment, the, uh, uh, your partner, he goes push on the head. And when you parry, I just want you to ride that arm. So, do that. This is a preliminary for the self-defense aspects of this. I'll be right back. Okay, now we'll get into some applications now. 
I find it interesting that in modernness, the very first action that Professor Remy teaches with the hands was the brush, trap, strike, or the trap hand, block, check, counter, however you wish to describe it. It's also the very first action in the empty hand forms. You're here, you go to your left, and bang, here. Now, the interesting thing is this, is that whenever I interpret any type of motion, any type of uh, kata application, I go by what I call motion application. So instead of, let's say if he throws the left hand punch, instead of this just being one, two, and bang, three, what I'm looking at is one arm moves inwards, the other hand comes over the top, the initial arm that moved inwards now extends. Now, what can this be? This can be a lot of different potential actions, such as he throws the punch, and notice, you see where his punch is? If you look at the, uh, the camera, it's over to the other side of my ear. He's actually following through, and this is very, very important for uh, when you're actually doing any kind of application. He throws the punch, okay, yes, you have this here. Now, he throws the punch, maybe I'm closer in, and I've got this here. He throws the punch, and I have work. We have a head extension, bang, so I can move him, or he throws the punch, and instead of cracking here, I've got an elbow wrench at this point. He throws the punch, nothing says I can't go low line and actually strike him in the groin, and then roll up into forearm bar, etc. He strikes with the front hand, you've got your strike here. He strikes with the front hand, I've got a turn, notice. Now, when I extend, I roll his head, brace my knee behind his knee, break the structure, slow him down, etc. So, these are just examples of trapping hand one, two, three here. If he throws a one, two, my strike ends up actually being my defense. Very simple. And then, bang, bang, you can follow through here. If you've got the concept of motion application, you've got the one, two, and three, now it's up to you to explore, discover what you can do just from this exact motion. But here's an interesting thing. We pick up our sticks, and this empty hand action is derived from the stick action, pop, pop, pop here, or pop, pop, pop here. It all comes from the stick. Enjoy.